Welcome back to the Look and Sound of Leadership, an ongoing series of executive coaching tips designed to help you be perceived in the workplace the way you want to be perceived. I'm Tom Henschel, your executive coach, and today we're talking about branding yourself. Ailsa was pursuing a promotion to vice president. Part of her campaign was lunching with the current VPs who would one day, she hoped, become her peers. Their support of her promotion was important. During our coaching conversations, she decided that at lunch, she would not be the one to bring up her promotion. If they wanted to talk about the promotion, great, she'd be happy to do it, but she wouldn't initiate it. She said to me, but I hope that doesn't mean I shouldn't talk about myself at all. What's your concern? I asked. Well, I hope there's a moment when they ask me, how's it going? Like happens during an interview, you know, tell us about yourself. I want that moment. Do you? I asked. So many people don't. No, she said. I'm ready for it. I had a boss who kicked our butts about moments like that. He used to say, a lot of business happens in those hallways. <laughs> and at that company, it was true. People were on the go and they stopped and they talked with each other a lot. He taught us, be ready. Give a snapshot of your project. Have an opinion. Tell your point of view. Talk about your work like it's the most fascinating thing on the planet. Good coaching, I said. It was. Having those bullets ready gave me a lot of confidence, like a gunslinger with a gun on my hip. Pew, pew, pew. I said, he taught you to brand your work. As if displaying an item, I said, here's what the project is. Here's what I think about it. Here's why it has value. Well, I influenced what people thought about my work, yes, which is what I think I should be doing now, influencing how people think of me as a candidate. But I want people to think well of me. Uh, to me, that would not mean branding. I have seen branding go very badly. How so, I asked. Oh, I had this friend, Siobhan. Oh, we would be in meetings. We'd be flipping through reports, and she would mutter, I'm rubbish with numbers. She said it a lot, and I always thought it was sweet. You know, she had the most delicious Irish accent, and hearing her say it just made me smile. Then one day, I heard people say they didn't want her on a team because they weren't sure she could process the data, and I thought to myself that rubbish with numbers phrase had not been sweet at all. It had branded her like a hot iron. Did it derail her, I asked? No. One night... She and I had a long conversation about our self-talk, and I asked her, was the phrase rubbish with numbers part of her self-talk? And she thought I was a mind reader until I told her, hey, look, you say it all the time, and she was horrified. Really, I asked. She hadn't known she'd been saying it, but she understood right away why it had branded her negatively. I mean, then, man, her Irish determination kicked in, and I don't think she ever said those words again. I said, she got vigilant about her self-talk. Did she ever? And it made me wonder, do I have little phrases like that that I use about myself? What did you decide, I asked. Well, I think I must. We all do, don't we? I said, what if branding was something positive instead? That's how I think of branding. Create yourself as someone people are attracted to. She looked away, nodding. And then she said, I do something with my team that's intentional on my part, and I do it a lot, but it is not the norm here. I I'm wondering if it's hurting or helping my brand. What is it, I asked. I involve my team in my development. I talk about where I need to build muscle. That is not what VPs do around here. VPs around here are supposed to be bulletproof. So it makes you different, I said. Well, that's my worry, she agreed. I said, if it makes you different, could it be part of your brand? Something that makes you attractive? Huh, a feature, not a bug? Well, I suppose. Yeah, that's an interesting take. After a pause, I asked, what would you think about during your lunches asking the VPs that very question? Hey, this is how I'm different. Do you think it helps my brand? Ask their advice, she smiled. I got to tell you, some of them would be flattered for sure. I think I just need to be careful about asking for advice. I don't want to show up as the poor, helpless female. 
Well, I trust you won't, Ailsa. How about the other way around, I asked. If they turned the tables on you, if they asked you, Hey, Ailsa, why do you do that thing with your team? How would you answer? Her response was immediate. I think leaders should show vulnerability. I think it's courageous. And selfishly, it helps me when I tell my team what I'm working on and that I'd like their help with it. They help me get better a whole lot faster than I would on my own. Would talking about that part of your leadership make you more attractive? She wondered, in this culture? Mm, Maybe. I'll have to think about it. Good, I said. Be intentional about your brand. That's a smart move. She said, you know what has helped me when I have to talk about myself? Assessments. My Myers-Briggs had this simple little phrase, and I still use it. Ailsa brings out the best in people. You know, when I first saw that on the page, it was like a big click. It was true. I had been bringing out the best in people all my life, but I just never had the language for it. But once I saw that on the page and I started using it, oh, it was so much easier to talk about myself. Like it was easy to talk about your projects when you had those bullets, I suggested. Yes, like that. I said, you're not alone using assessment language. I coached a guy who used verbatim portions of his disc report in his self-review. His boss, who happened to be the CEO, thought it was one of the best reviews he'd ever read. She laughed. Did your guy tell him the truth? I laughed, too. That's a good question. I don't remember. She asked, so do you think that move was wise or sneaky? Oh, no, I said. I think it's great. Just like you bring out the best in people, if an assessment can give you language about yourself, why wouldn't you use it? That's how branding works. What else should I be thinking about branding, she asked. I was so glad she asked. I said, I have an exercise I do with people. It's all about branding. It relates, actually, to self-talk, as a matter of fact, but the most positive kind. Like affirmation, she said. Um, In a way, I agreed. Instead of explaining it, I said, can I just do it with you? Oh, you bet, she said. Elsa always liked thought exercises. Okay. I said, imagine yourself at a meeting. You're with other department heads. It's lively, lots of voices, complex conversation. And on this day, you are a star. Every time you open your mouth, you add value. You make two or three suggestions that the group adopts on the spot, and it feels easy. It's flow. You can feel it. Everyone there can feel it. And then you have to go to another meeting, and you excuse yourself, you gather up your things, and you're out the door. And after you're gone, the people still sitting around the table look at each other, And they nod their heads and they go, whoa, Elsa, she is great. She's so... What? What are the next words? How do you fill in the blank? What words do you want them to use to describe you at your absolute best? With only a slight pause, Elsa said, smart, strategic, collegial. Terrific, I said. So let's say those words are going to become your branding words. My self-talk, she said. Yes, I said. The next time you go to a meeting, think of yourself as smart, strategic, and collegial as often as you can. Or the phone rings. You reach to answer it, and you think to yourself, I'm going to be smart, strategic, and collegial during this call. And you think of those three words as often as you can, all day long. You think of the words as often as you can. Like a mantra, she said. Like a mantra, I echoed. And just as with a mantra, you don't predetermine your behavior. You think the words, and then you see what happens. What does smart and strategic and collegial look like on you? It's an exploration. It's not a performance. This is great, she said. I want to do this. I asked, you know what I've seen? What? I've seen the actual words come back to people. Come back how, she asked. One woman that I coached focused on her branding words for about a year. 
And boy, you mentioned Irish determination. She was like that. Those words were activated in her head all the time. And then in her boss's review of her, two of her exact words showed up. And her boss had never used those words about her before. She asked, and it's not like she'd been saying those words to her boss all year, right? I laughed, no, she hadn't, but that is exactly what a different woman did. Gosh, I loved this. I don't remember what her branding words were, but suppose one of them was strategic. So when she'd speak up in a meeting, she'd preface her comments with something like, well, if I put my strategic hat on, what comes to mind is, I mean, she put her branding words right out there. And since the words were accurate, people accepted it. They started thinking of her the way she wanted She laughed appreciatively. It's a Jedi mind trick. It's branding, I said. During her subsequent lunches with the VPs, Ailsa tuned into her self-talk. She crafted her brand with precision. Every word that she used about herself aimed at painting a portrait of someone who was quite adept at the look and sound of leadership. Branding. Personal branding. I wonder, does branding feel important to you at the moment? This episode is being recorded in the early days of the coronavirus outbreak here in the United States. And we're all still in whiplash from our world screeching to a halt. So much is new. So much is uncomfortable. There's so much information we're trying to take in. And we are experiencing each other differently. Our friends and our family and our coworkers are suddenly all now remote. And one of the things that has happened in this time is that articles pop up about how to look good on a Zoom call. I saw one the other day written by a cinematographer, and you know what? It was helpful. But it is one more thing that we need to be thinking about, right? Like we have to suddenly think about washing our hands. We didn't used to have to think about washing our hands. As I've been talking these past weeks with my clients, and as I've been helping a nonprofit where I sit on the board, I have been hearing something repeatedly. And to me, it has been inspiring. I hear people comply with something that is not in their best interest, at least not in the short term. They are willing, nevertheless. They are willing to experience these unbelievable disruptions in their lives for a future good that none of us can see. It is inspiring. (laughs) So here's a different way to think of this. For the past couple of years, I've been coaching a family-run business in my neighborhood. It's a dad about my age, and he's got two grown sons. And between the three of them, there are a million frictions. They love each other, but each one of them takes up so much space, and they just don't get along very well. Well, I introduced them to Patrick Lencioni's idea of the first team, the team that's bigger than yourself. Are you going to really take that shot just because you can, even though there's someone wide open under the basket? Who are you putting up points on the board for? Who is your first team? The people that I am interacting with are accepting tough adjustments because they see the same bigger first team. And the way I see it, we suddenly are all each other's first team. We suddenly have to depend on each other in a way we really never, ever have before. If we all see the same first team, this ends sooner. We'll see how we do. My clients, my nonprofit, they've all been seeing the same first team. Yay. But this is supposed to be about branding. So let me begin with what I already mentioned. I wasn't kidding talking about looking good on a Zoom call. We are all seeing each other in new ways, right? We are all on video now, and the camera brands us for sure. You remember that article I mentioned by the cinematographer about looking good on Zoom? I have put it in the show notes. Now, this is going to lead me to a quick digression about what you can find in this month's show notes. First, that article about looking good on Zoom, then an article from Forbes, 
four ways to make a better video conference. I just want to say I agree with all four recommendations. It's very helpful. It's in the show notes. From the Harvard Business Review, an article titled, That Discomfort You're Feeling. It's an important read, especially if you're leading others. It's in the show notes. If you want some comfort about the virus, there's a link to a Zoom recording that a frontline doctor in New York did with his friends and his family. He is treating the sickest coronavirus patients. He talked about what he is experiencing, and it is very comforting. He has a great message for all of us. It's in the show notes. And then finally, if you're a coach, there is something for you in the show notes. I will tell you about it after the sign-off at the end of the episode. So for coaches, just keep listening after I say goodbye. Okay. Wow. The point, and it's one of two points that I want to make about branding, the point is that every time you turn on your camera, you are branding yourself. So be intentional. Take the time to make some choices about your lighting and about your background. The second point I want to make is about self-talk. And I will make that point right after this month's gratitude. I have to begin by telling you that I am in the high-risk group for COVID-19. If I get this virus, the odds are against me. That has been sobering. <laughs> One irony out of it all is that I had begun revising my trust in my will many months ago, so that was good timing. But seriously... I would be in denial if I didn't accept the very real possibility that in six or eight weeks I could be dead. I've had conversations about this with both of my daughters, and I wrestle with it every day. Believe me, I do. And what I find happens is that after I get past the fear, I land in gratitude. I have so much that I am grateful for. And today, here, talking with all of you, I am grateful to you. Thank you all. This month, even as the world shakes on its axis, people posted wonderful reviews in iTunes. Louis Plee from Ireland, thank you. Kevin J.F. from New Zealand, thank you. And from here in the U.S., X Vieira and V6L, thank you. I am grateful, really, to all of you for all the years. Thank you so much. All right. A final point about branding yourself with your self-talk. During our conversation, Elsa felt certain that she had phrases that she spoke out loud about herself that were branding her unintentionally. I agree. I think we all do. It's our self-talk. Look, our self-talk is in our heads every day, all the time. And sometimes it comes out out loud. <laughs> we do say little things about ourselves all the time, and we may not know it. It's like touching your face. It's very hard to be aware of every time you touch your face, right? We all do it. Now that we are all so disoriented, and now that we are in all these reactions, I would like to suggest that self-talk might be flying out of your mouth at an alarming rate. <laughs> It would make sense, right? I mean, we're all in this new territory playing a game whose stakes we cannot comprehend. So we are vulnerable in ways that we just never have been before. Even Elsa, who says she loved vulnerability in a leader, she ain't never seen nothing like this, right? In these times of illness and worry, I would like to speak to the leadership part of you. And I'd like to suggest two ideas to you. First... When you see someone's brand suddenly go off track, don't you react. It's their self-talk spilling out. Have compassion. Everyone is careening off the guardrails. Be kind. Second, have some compassion for yourself. If things come out of your mouth that feel off-brand, it's okay. Listen, I want to be clear. I don't think you should stop paying attention to your choices. I think you should be acting with intention. Do the best you can, of course. But understand that some of your choices right now might be a little off-brand, and you don't have to hold it together every moment of every day. Asking for help is important. It's actually another first-team concept, right? Asking for help helps everyone. 
branding. It's important. If you would like to get more conscious about branding, oh my goodness, there's so much in the archive. Look, I mean, think about the whole purpose of this show. It's to help you be perceived the way you want to be perceived. That's branding, right? So you could go into the archive and look at all kinds of things, but three categories you might look at in particular are executive presence, perception, how you're perceived, and self-talk. Five episodes you could tune into about branding are Becoming Expert, Acting on the Corporate Stage, The Voice of Authority, Conquering Fear, because yes, there's branding in there, and Achieving Authenticity. It's all on the Essential Communications website, EssentialCom.com. It's EssentialCom with two M's, dot com. And just go to the podcast page. It's all there for you. It's all for free. Okay. I hope to see you all again real soon. That's it for me. I'm Tom Henschel. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, all you coaches. Hey, it's special interest group time, April 10th, 2020. Listen, I am in my third year hosting an international online gathering of coaches who are interested in executive coaching. We are part of ICF Los Angeles. If you don't know the ICF LA chapter, we are international leaders in providing online content. We have these fantastic teleclasses and we have these special interest groups. There's, oh, there's a great special interest group about building your business. There's one on coaching supervision and there's one on executive coaching. And that's the one that I host. Our next meeting is April 10th, 2020, beginning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. It's a 90-minute meeting. We spend most of the time in small breakout rooms talking with other coaches. And some of them are like me. They've been coaching for 30 years. And some of them haven't even begun their training yet. They're just interested. It's wonderful. People have found mentors there. People have found business partners there. It's been a great community. You need to register. Go to icfla.org and come join us. April 10th, 9 a.m. Pacific. If you're a chapter member, it's free. If you're not, you're going to pay a couple of bucks, but it's very affordable. It would be so much fun to see you there. Okay, bye-bye.